shall we? All right. Um, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another roundtable discussion. This is a very special roundtable discussion because we just had DC Fandom and the first official trailer for Zack Snyder's Justice League. So we're going to talk about all that greatness. But first, I just want to introduce my guest. Uh, over here, we have Alessandro. This way. Look, I can't even. There we go. Alessandro. <laughs> Down here, we have Vega. Yes. And then next to him, we have Julian. So um, you guys want to introduce yourselves and say something real quick before we get started? Starting with Alessandro. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just introduced us, so. Yeah, I, know. I mean, some of you may know me from the JLU podcast. Others may know me from being pretty active in the movement. Uh, you know, uh, you may know me as Lex, uh, but yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be on with you. I, I really enjoy your enthusiasm, Tyler. So I'm happy to be on this roundtable with, with you I, and, and the, the others. So I appreciate that. All right, down here. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, well, Vega, as he said, um, I don't know how well owned I, mean, I am in the movement, but I'm there. <laughs> you can find me sometimes, though. Um, but I just did the Snyder Cut Anthem. Uh, track with uh, with Peely, uh, Mr. West Ashley on Twitter. Oh. Um, so yeah, if you if you're interested in hearing that, you can find that on his YouTube page. For now, uh, we are uh, trying to get it onto um, other uh, music uh, platforms. So um, that's gonna be happening pretty soon as well. Um, that's about it. <laughs> All right, sweet, Julian. Well, I can <laughs> say almost certainly that none of you know me but it's not about me it's about all of you all the amazing fans out there and i'm just here to like represent them and well myself i guess all right appreciate that well like i said we just had dc fandom which was this past saturday which was a crazy event i had expectations of what i wanted to happen and again it surpassed that it's just absolute craziness so I just want to know what you guys think. And again, we'll just continue to go in the same order. And of course, we'll, you know, the conversation will flow a little bit. But when I ask questions, we'll just go in the same order. My first question is like, what did you think of DC Fandom? How, how was it to you? Did, you? did you enjoy it? Like, what, like, how was the overall experience of DC Fandom? Well, I'll tell you what, it wasn't what I expected at first because um, I had remember seeing something about an interactive virtual hall. So I thought that people would be going to different areas in sort of this virtual yeah. space, being just like a long stream. But I, and I think that worked out fine. Um, that way, you could just tune in when whenever that uh, particular panel you wanted to see was was going to be on. Yeah. Okay. But the you know the material was 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 good. Uh, I don't know how you guys felt about it, but I, I think in general the format was good, and I think it was a successful. Uh, run at that they could certainly do again in the future. It's it's going to be interesting because originally it was supposed to have all five or six of those different things at once. Like it was going to have like different like the U verse. It was going to have the watch first. All that stuff going on at once. So yeah, you were there was going to have to be a way of going from there to there because like you said with with what we just saw, it was just straight through because it was just the um, Hall of Heroes. So they could just go right through it. And you would just go to one place to, to watch all the content. But it's interesting because on September 12th, they're going to have the second part of DC Phantom where you're going to have the four or five other different uh, sections of it. So it's going to be interesting to see how they what they do with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Vega, what'd you think? Yeah. Um, I Similar to Lex, like I, you know, I, at first I thought it was going to be some, you know, yeah, virtual kind of thing. You go in and I don't know. Yeah. More, I guess, hands on like that. But I'm not complaining. Uh, I think the way it, it turned out was fine. Um, actually, I think it works better this way, to be honest with you. I, I found it a bit confusing at first. You know, like, well, wait, what do you mean I got a schedule and, uh, you know, I want to watch this, but this is playing at the same time, you know. Now I have to decide, like, what is it that I want to see more? Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I thought that was just a bit much. So the fact that they went about it this way, I think it works out a lot better. I personally appreciated it. Um, I was able to watch the whole thing um, beginning to end, and yeah, I enjoyed it overall, you know. And um, I mean, the Snyder Cut, boy, like, come <laughs> on, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this gloriousness, man. Definitely. 
<laughs> and we're going to get into that in a second. Uh, but uh, Julian, what do you think? Well, yeah, like the others, I thought it was going to be more interactive. Mildly disappointed, but not as much as accidentally getting spoiled. That was one thing that I hope oh. will happen to the rest of you. <laughs> yeah, that, I, that I, I, To hell with the guy who decided to leak it early. That I think that may have actually killed some of the momentum. Hopefully not too much because we're still going strong, but yeah, not well, cool what they did. Yeah. It was uh, the, the leak. A lot of people didn't know about it. And I was telling a friend of mine today, I, I said, I, I was happy that I was watching because we had this crisis of infinite streams that I was a part of before the event happened. Mm. And the last, the last show before DC Phantom started was Fatal J show. And I just, I just uh -oh. was like watching the last couple minutes of it just because I was just, you know, showing some support or whatever. And as I'm watching it, I see some, some kid commented and he said, yo, the trailer just leaked. And I'm like, what? It leaked. So immediately I go to Twitter because I know that Twitter and all the people that I'm surrounding myself with on Twitter, if it leaked, it's going to be like right away they're going to have it on there like talking about it. Like, you know, <laughs> it's so great. Or whatever, the trailer leaked, blah, blah. So I go on there. There's nothing. Nothing at all. So I was like, oh, okay. He was just pulling our letter. He, whatever. He was just being stupid, just trying to be funny. And I, I think I even like searched it on YouTube. I didn't find anything. So I was like, oh, no, it's nothing. So I, I turned off Jay's channel for a second. So I turned it back on. And when I turned it back on, I see that they're they're like putting a trailer up and they're like, here it is, everyone, here it is. And I'm like, what? No, what? So like <laughs> I had I had to watch it. I couldn't just be like, no, no, no. I had to watch it. And then there it was. And I was just like, oh my God. So I guess that's a, a great segue into my next question is what did you guys think about that that trailer? I mean, because I thought it was just absolutely bananas and more than I ever expected. So uh Lex, what what do you think, man? Well, let me just begin by saying I did the opposite of you. As soon as I heard there was a leak, I <laughs> ran away from Twitter. <laughs> yeah, right. Because uh, I wanted to advice. see it, you know, how we were supposed to see it. But yeah, <laughs> I my level of shock was just uh, I have, I've never experienced that level of shock. I, you know, I expected a decent trailer and I expected to them to uh, Zach to retread a lot of stuff we'd already seen. So not as not to spoil anything. Yeah, but that was basically all new stuff. You know, maybe we've seen some of it through leaks, but yeah, it, it blew my mind. And you know, I, I keep saying, and I really mean it. Every time I watch it, tears come to my eyes, man. Just thinking yeah. back to fighting for three years to get this, yeah. it's very emotional. Oh, yeah. There's so much behind it, mm. and and you know, it was the same with me when I watched it. Like, I'm not a very emotional guy, you know. It, especially for a trailer, but there was so much behind this trailer and it, it was just like, wow, I can't believe this is happening. Like we, yeah. we, we freaking, we freaking did it. Like, it, like it's just crazy. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Vega, what'd you think, man? Uh, I mean, yeah, see same thing as Lex. I, I, uh, <laughs> the second I saw that there was a leak, cause trust me, I had a way <laughs> of watching the link or the leak. Yeah. And I was like, I'm not going to do this to myself. <laughs> like, let me, Especially because, like, I wasn't sure if, like, uh, what if it's not the actual trailer? And here I am about to watch yeah. visually yeah. what I'm supposed to watch. But what if the, the audio is something else just so that yeah. they can get away with it? And I just didn't want to ruin my experience. And I was like, you know what? Let me let me wait for it to just come up and for Zach to show it. And, and that's what I'll do. Um, you know, whether, whether it was a bad thing or not, I, I think it actually kind of worked out low key. You know, I feel like it started the trend of the Snyder cut way before yeah. it needed to happen. It did. But yeah. you know what I mean? And, and, uh, and it had everybody talking about it without it even, you know, without it really being presented just yet. So yeah. it just, it, it showed uh, just how much people were anticipating it uh, already, you know? Um, but personally, man, whoo, that trailer, man, like <laughs> I watched it over and over again, like oh, yeah. just to, and yeah, like granted, some of it was things we we saw through like the storyboards that Zach would share and things of that nature. But this was us watching it now move, you know, mm -hmm. in live action with color and every and, it, and it's full glory. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, dude, like yeah, I, this, just so much, dude. I'm looking forward to now. Um, yeah, you know, you can't help but get somewhat emotional just because it's like, you know, it's something we've been waiting for for so long and. Uh, and then just seeing like you, you you already feel the difference. You see the difference between what we got in the oh yeah theatrical cut so and uh, 
so much, man. And in, in just two minutes and 30 seconds, you already know yep. it's like, this is a whole different film. It's a whole different yep. vibe. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, man, I, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Julian? I have not cried like that. Not since I watched the trailer for Cloud Atlas. Wow. And that is saying mm. something because that movie really did move me, especially that trailer when you play it to the tune of outro. Man. Yeah. So them That's... taking a, hang on. Uh, I lost you for a second. Leonard Cohen's Hallelujah. People are complaining that that song is used too much, but that's because it's that good a song. Yeah. Like you can't <laughs> not love it. Yeah, yeah. Me. I mean, it and, also suits the situation. <laughs> yes. And right. So seeing Darkseid, even if he wasn't fully finished, because I know they're going to work on him a little more, yeah. right off the gate, he's showing this was in it. Seeing Desaad fully mm. realized. Yeah. And then yeah, seeing yeah. Steppenwolf looking like a man. <laughs> <laughs> a little bitch, <laughs> and yeah, and Superman in all his black glory, his black, yes. that black suit slapped. Yes, man, so much, so many yeah. fields, and him and Martha and Lois or Martian Manhunter, no yeah. idea. <laughs> yes. Good, yes, good point. Good point. Yes, yes. yes. Anyway, there's so much, and I don't care what anyone who doesn't like it thinks. We are going to love this. Yeah, it's going to be and, like, and you know, you know what? Uh, I know that every, I'm pretty sure everyone here they saw that Scott Mendelson he came out with that tweet <laughs> talking about oh that guy, yeah. You know, and I, 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 I'm not, I'm not trying to be like, I'm not trying to bring up the negativity with all that and everything, right. but he he made a comment talking about <laughs> it was just it was like the same like movie with just different shots or whatever, and uh, then I I made the mistake of watching John Campius take on that. Which I shouldn't have done. Ooh, uh, yeah. But I, 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 I was, I was really listen. I, I, I don't watch John Campy anymore. I used to, but that, when it comes to Snyder Cut stuff, I, I still, I get always give him a second chance. I'm like, okay, maybe he can redeem himself. Maybe, maybe. He can redeem himself. So now I said, you know what? DC fandom just happened. Let's listen to see what John Campy had to say about it. Mm. And the only thing he talked about, which the, or the video I was watching yesterday, he probably got more into it in today's show, but I didn't watch it. Is he was talking about Scott Mendelson's remarks. And he was saying how, you know, a lot of people are going to hate me for saying this, but what he said is is true. But then it got, me, it got me it got me thinking, and a lot of the shots that were in that trailer were sh- were were shots that that Zach showed us on his Vero account. If you go back and you look, sure, yeah, yeah, and Almost you look at all, all, yeah, like so, like so many, so many, yes. And yes. that's the beautiful thing about this is the fact that we already saw all that stuff. And this movie's four hours long, so mm-hmm. we we barely seen any. You know what I mean? Like we we yeah. like all those. Sh- we just saw them yeah. actually moving this time. Yeah, Tap, right. tip of the iceberg. Exactly. So exactly. Again, I mean, it, th- this movie is just going to be jam packed, and you know they're still calling that a teaser. So we're going to get more trailers. Oh know, yeah. To, to come, which so is much. which is amazing, and right. I just can't wait for it. But uh, n- next thing I want to bring up is the song choice. Julian, you make a great point. That song, it's like before I even saw, like I saw the HBO Max logo, and that song starts playing, and I'm just like, <laughs> like right away, I was just like, oh my god, like they just hit me, and it was such a beautiful song choice. And I know a lot of people have been putting out videos already, and they've been just dissecting why he used that song. But one, mm-hmm. like two, two of my favorite reasons of why he used that song is one, it's a celebration, Hallelujah, we did exactly. it, like that's surface level. We did it. It was a beautiful like song to have in there. It made sense. Yep. But my favorite one is the fact that uh, apparently the same guy who made that song, uh, Leonard Cohen, he made the same song that Joss Whedon had as the intro for Justice League. The Everybody oh, Knows wow. the Everybody Knows song. Apparently oh, that was the did, cover yeah. of, a, of a Leonard Cohen song, Cohen song. So I was like, damn, so that's like a big F you to Joss Whedon from Zach. <laughs> Saying like, no, <laughs> this is how you do it. Um, wow. Yeah. So I, okay. I thought that. Was, but again, I, I've I've watched a couple of videos where people are like, oh, it means this. The song is me. Like, there's so much behind it. I mean, anything Zach does, there's definitely double meanings to it. it, yes. it, it yeah. mean, the man, it, the, whatever he puts out, whatever a movie, a trailer, what like the dude, like he just does yeah. it right. He does it so good. I guess so. My question to you is like, what did you think about the song? Did you enjoy it? Did you think it fit 
Like, because I I have been talking to people recently that said they 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 didn't like it. They thought it was a horrible choice for the trailer, but I absolutely loved it. So, what do you guys think? I can start with you, Lex. Sure. All right. So, I mean, I originally thought that there might be some junky Excel music, but yeah, frankly, I thought it was the perfect choice. I think on so many different levels, it was certainly a, a, ce a celebration, and the lyrics both matched up with the uh, visuals as well as Zach's message to us, mm -hmm. you know, um, there's, I mean, there's, you can analyze it and there's just so much behind it. And I think it, it was also sort of, it was very meta, you know, it wasn't like, Oh, here's a trailer. This is like, no, this is, you know, our celebration. Like, yeah, this is it. This is what we've been waiting for. So, and I think it, it makes, seeing it all the more emotional than just like a typical, you know, a soundtrack to a, a, a trailer. So, um, yeah, I think it was the right choice. Um, and his life knows what he's doing, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Most definitely. 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 Um, yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more with you guys. Uh, I really, I think the overall idea of that song being used was the celebration aspect of it, you know? Hallelujah, we're finally getting this matter cut, you know? Yeah. So it was like one of those things. Um, and lyrically, like Lex said, I mean, when you really listen to the lyrics, the lyrics are saying something. Uh, they, one, they mesh well with what you're kind of seeing in the, in the, in the teaser, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But when you really pay attention to the lyrics, they, they say a lot more. And Zach, you know, Zach is very big on lyrics. Like if you watch Sucker Punch, even the score, the soundtracks used on that uh, movie, the lyrics meant everything for you to like know where the, I guess, where the emotion and where the uh, the mindset was at in the movie. And it's, it's the same thing with this trailer. The lyrics let you know where you're supposed to be at mentally, emotionally, uh, so that you're, you know, like kind of like we're one, you know? Um, I do like that idea though that you said. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, you know, I didn't even know that. Yeah, uh, that it was the same guy from jo uh, Josh's. Uh, uh, <laughs> so yeah, I, artist, I can see yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I could definitely see that being like a uh, like yeah, in a sense of big f you. You know, like hey, uh, you know, this Other is the track are... should have used. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I could see why people would, um, I guess, be. Uh, I don't know. You know, we we, we live in this like um, time where like everybody's like nitpicking everything. And especially when it comes to Zach, it's like, they find everything that yeah. they can nitpick about him just to nitpick and, yeah, they're, you yeah. know. They're, they're it freaks, is it is. unfortunately. They're like clowns. They are clowns. They live in a society. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they're clowning, that's all they're doing, they're clowning. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know how true it is, but I had read that that was one of uh, his daughter's favorite songs. So that makes it even more emotional. Oh, wow. And I mean, I don't know how true that is, but yeah, that well, case. we can ask him maybe if we ever get him on here. Uh, I don't have that. I don't have right. his clock connections, but anyway, well, yeah. What'd you think of the music? Julian? So for me, uh, let's be honest. How, what else were we thinking? But praise, you know, like hallelujah, it's here. And yeah, it doesn't matter if there's a connection that he intended that you didn't get it. It doesn't matter if you don't like the music. You know, you see this trailer, even without the sound, it looks incredible. All you yeah. got to think is, hallelujah. And so, hell, I would probably be thinking it even without that song. You know, maybe not right. those words, but like, hell yes, we have won. And now yeah, everybody's yeah, trying definitely. to hate on us, but, you know, like, screw them. Yeah. Because I mean, that's I'm... what they will always do. Yeah. You know, they said it would never hate... come out. They laughed at us then. And all they can do is laugh now because they don't know how else to. Yep, that's it. Right. <laughs> Download, release the Snyder Cut. It's getting released. And, and that's what's crazy, man, is like this stuff is hitting so hard because of, of like how hard we've been working within this movement for so many years. And it's just, it's crazy to see it happening. Like, like th this is unprecedented. This has never happened before. Like the yeah, fans well, spoke not up. Not like this, and, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Right. Exactly, and Sean O'Connell talks about it all the time from Cinema Blood. He's like, "This is like the crazy." He said he's been like in the in the movie business or whatever, uh, blogger movie business for like twenty years. He said this has never happened before. This is crazy that fans actually you know made their voices be heard and f not necessarily forced, but got a studio 
to, you know, give them what they wanted. And, and now we're just, we're making out like bandits right now because now they're at and is giving them more money to do more scenes, uh, additional photography, whatever you want to call it. And now like this DC fandom thing happens and we see Ben Affleck is back. I mean, oh, yeah. it, it's just, it, I mean, it's, it's, it's absolute craziness. And like, I, I think about like where we were maybe like before May 20th compared mm. to now, only, only like a couple oh. months ago. And now look at so, us, you know? Yeah. I just actually checked according to Sean, as you mentioned, it, it is yeah. indeed apparently a tribute to his daughter. That song. Is it? Mm. Wow. That's, there you go. There you go. There's a, there's another. And you know what? Like, some people mm. will still laugh at that because they are that cruel. They are that sore because they just, they want to hate. They, Certain people they just don't understand, it. man. That's what it yeah. is. That Bob Dylan, that remember Watchmen's Bob Dylan? Like, I forget it. Don't criticize what you can't understand, but they'll do it anyway because they don't they'll know do what, anyway. how else to behave. Yep. And, yep. and that's well, something we've I, seen a lot of that for BBS. So I'm yep. sure we'll see more when yeah. Snedeka comes out, too. And, and that's at least, I, yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Julian. My bad. At least the critics, there won't be as many to, to lash out on it because it'll be on HBO Max. There won't be this rashing. It'll right. be like maybe a hundred at most, but even then, I think more of them will be reasonable. I think they'll all see it as an improvement over what we saw. Well, most of them, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I mean, th that medium has changed. You know, like the reality is, is we're not uh, as far as like uh, bloggers and social media sites and things, that, or you know, the you know that that tell the news. A lot of them are switching their opinion now. You know, because they realize it's <laughs> oh, now they? it's it's cooler. It's cooler to be on this side now. You know, yeah. because well, I think we have say, new haters showing but, up, and that's, <laughs> that, the thing, that's, what I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to get at is they're, <laughs> we're seeing haters, but they're new haters, like, and some of them right. from before, obviously. They, but when you look at all of them entirely, like, not all of them are speaking that same language anymore because they realize, like, well, what is it? What, what are we arguing now at this point? They actually got their cut, <laughs> you know, they actually <laughs> yeah. Got it now, the one you know? question I keep hearing echoed, and it's kind of petty at this point, is they're asking. They say it's honest, but they think, why do we think it'll be better? Because we liked the movie. Like, Did you see the it's trailer? not an honest question. It's an idiotic <laughs> question. Like, I get that you didn't like it. How can you not get that we like it? Like, right, yeah. right. Exactly. I mean, honestly, seeing that trailer, you got to wonder what the studio was even thinking. Well, that's like, not, that, not can't using... <laughs> think that was honestly that what was I was it, thinking it, the whole time. That's yep. what I was thinking the whole time. I'm like, I can't believe the studio was against this what i'm looking at right now with my own eyes like what was wrong about this what were they afraid of here you know it, uh, it had to be sabotage it, yeah, it was yeah. it, that's the it, it makes it even more clear wow. that that's what it was that it was a sabotage right. move, uh, to yeah. because this would have came out before infinity war yeah way before. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yep that's yes. the thing actually some guy on twitter has just claimed that feige should sue for I just start looking like <laughs> Corvus Glide. I'm sure he was half joking, <laughs> but yeah. we both know that that idea was well before, you know. You yeah. know, it, it's it's hard for for me to accept it, but I I think I, I've come to realize is that I think the general audience they don't really understand the the, the art that like we do, you know, when it comes to Zack Snyder, because you know a lot of people that I especially at work or people I surround myself with, and that's why one of the reasons I started this YouTube channel is because. I felt alone because a lot of people I talk oh, to yeah. about this stuff, they're all like, like just yesterday I was talking to some kid uh, from my baseball team, my men's league. And he was saying, he was like, I actually like the justice league movie. And I was like, yeah, no, no, that's fine. I was right. like, but it wasn't Zach's movie. And I'm a huge Zack Snyder fan right. and it wasn't his movie. And it's like a lot of people don't understand his work, but when right. you understand it, it blows your mind. And it's like a fine wine. A lot of times oh, my experiences with, with Zack Snyder, Especially, I remember I watched, I saw Watchmen one time mm. and I was just like, eh, whatever. That d didn't really do anything for me, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then years later, I'm like, oh my God, Watchmen is like, is legit. Like, that's one of the greatest com comic book movies of all time. Yeah. And then, like, I saw Man of Steel and I was like, damn, like, he did this with a Superman movie. Like, I, you know, I, I'm, I'm used to the Christopher Reeves, Brendan, Brandon I Routh, know. you know, and then he comes with this. I'm like, Damn, I, I like this dude. And then BVS, same thing with BVS. I walked out of BVS, I didn't know what to think. Mm. Fast forward two weeks later, I was like, "Wow, mind blown!" Like you really sit <laughs> on it and you think of it because he makes you think, man. People don't want to think; people they want they, right, 
Right. Like Mar- Mar- yeah, like like Martin Scorsese says, like a Marvel film. They just want a fun ride. You know what I mean? Just, oh, get on the right. ride. Oh, that was fun. Okay. And we yeah, go but they, uh, yeah. yeah like, that's that's that, that comic book writers apparently don't want you to think too hard either. Like, I'm not going to name names, but there's a lot of Spider-Man stories that in retrospect are not nearly as clever as they thought they were. Yeah. Right. No, no I, I don't I, even I, like the, the classic night when Stacy died. Nothing against the writers, but I felt it was a disservice, honestly. Mm. Yeah, most I mean, definitely. Zack Snyder, like, study study um, art. I mean, when when you know when we go on Twitter or on social media and we try to you know analyze Zack's films, you know, and we show all the, the layers and mm-hmm. the meanings, you know, you you get a lot of people saying, "Oh, you know, he didn't mean it that way," or you know, you're, you're looking too deep into it, but I mean, that's how Zach is that that's what he does. So he makes art. So I mean, people will look at a painting and just not get that the artist might've meant something deeper. They just see the colors and the face, you know, the, the face value, but you know, there's a, there's actually an art to looking at art. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You know, and so when we when we see how the the depth of Zach's you know art, his films, that you know, and these other people just don't see it, you know, it comes off as condescending. But it's like you know what, you don't get it, and, right. and that's yeah. okay. Uh, but you know, that's why we appreciate it because we see how great it is. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly, man. I mean, you know, and it's it's it, what, what's crazy about it, honestly, too, is when you think about it. It almost seems like, I, and it seems almost as if like not even everybody was even on that same, um, I guess. Wait, like, line. Yeah, exactly. Because when you really look back at like what the complaints were for like Man of Steel and BVS, and you and then you see what's happening now, it's like you start to understand like somebody was just screaming a lot of noise, probably because they were paid to or given. <sighs> the you know mo- uh, yeah. motivation to do so and then everybody just followed because a lot of it was right. you know uh, oh uh you know superman doesn't kill batman doesn't kill oh, God, uh, that, that or uh, I-, I want why are we getting all these heroes without their origin stories you know and it's, <laughs> you know and it's like it's, really like you guys yep. really need an origin story to batman as if we don't know it already you know what i mean like yeah yep. It is sad, especially yeah. since like, I'm sure Snyder and the studio felt it was unnecessary yeah. what with the it, it Dark Knight really, trilogy having just wrapped up the year before. Right. Exactly, exactly. It really wasn't necessary. And then, you know, what, what's funny to me is like, even before we had like these movies, we had already uh, Lord of the Rings that gave us, you know, that first trilogy. And then they gave us The Hobbits, which comes way before it, you know. Uh, right. Star Wars did the same thing. You know, you had episode four, five, and six, and then we got one, two, and three, you know? So don't yeah. sit here and tell me that you can't pick up a story from a certain point and then, right. you know, uh, and then every now and then go back to give you somewhat of, I guess, an origin or something yeah. that happened before this moment in time, you know? it's It's, it's been done way before then, and it would have worked perfectly fine. It's a shame, really, that the studio decided to meddle and do their thing, and, you know, I, it I, is what it is. People, people like I've I've realized, and I've got caught in. I, I've been trapped in this as well. Is they get used to the same things. They get used to so like it's kind of like a formula. Like Marvel comes up with this formula where they're going to have origin stories for everyone, and then this is how they're going to do their their arc, and they're going to go through twenty movies, and it's going to end this way. So, in a lot of people's eyes now, it's like, oh no, you can't get to the biggest villain until the twentieth movie. Or, no, you have to have an origin story for every, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Like, they get used to formulas. And it's like, same thing with the Dark Knight trilogy. And before that, it's like, oh, Batman doesn't kill. That was in people's heads. So that then, is so, I, I know. On, I, I'll, I'll have something to say about that later. Yeah, I, I understand. Like, if you read the comics and you know that sometimes Batman does kill. But people don't right. understand that. So they don't like that. They hate that change. They're like, no, 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 no. And again, I, I keep on bringing up examples from people that I interact with, like, literally just today talking to someone at work and he was talking about how he doesn't like how now DC is in the direction of doing this multiverse and how it's going to confuse everyone. Like you're giving us, you know, two different Batmans and that's going to be confusing. And look, I'm just like, no, it's smart. If you listen to Walter Hamada and you listen to Jim Lee, it's like now they can do like whatever they want. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. like as a studio, you can, you can be like, 
oh, I want to make another Batman movie. Like, no, 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 we can't do that. We have our Batman already over here. Like, oh, now, yeah. now you can do that. You know what I mean? Like, right. you, there's so many different possibilities. I mean, yep. is that guy is that guy implying that comic readers are smarter than your average person? Because <laughs> they've been doing that in the comics for decades. Uh, exactly. Exactly. I, I, I know. I I understand. It's it's just again, I different interactions with, with people that I that I know. And Here's it's just, the thing. Yeah. What's up? People say it's changed, but if anyone actually paid attention to Batman or Batman Returns or hell, even The Dark Knight. They'd realized that Batman had been killing all the time, and they just didn't want to see it. Right. I think right. Batman v Superman is the first time where we took Batman killing, and we saw how wrong it was. Yeah. Mm. Which was you the know, point. Yeah, that was the that, point, it was yeah. always the point. You know, when yeah. when it happened in Batman and Batman Returns, you're not supposed to feel horrified by it. In fact, it's supposed to be comedic. It's supposed to be almost triumphant, especially when Danny Elfman's theme is like blaring in the background. <laughs> and I have to get started on that. Yeah. Then there's a the whole scene oh. where, you know, like the garbage truck driver is attacking the uh, like squad car that's holding Harvey Dent. And then the bat comes and just comes barreling down the tunnel at, from the <laughs> other end at 80 miles an hour and crushes the, com the compartment, killing yeah. the driver. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Like <laughs> that moment is just too cool to be like, you know, like I get it. He had to do it. Right. And right. then it even, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but here, yeah. like we're seeing this very like sinister tone as Batman is gunning down criminals, like blowing them up, and while he's not like aiming to do it, he just doesn't care anymore. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it, you know, and the oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, and he specifically says that he's at war. So in wartime, you have different rules. Yeah. And yeah. so. People are trying to, you know, put him in a in a context of like everyday Batman, but this is not like an everyday situation. He he sees himself in a war, so casualties are always expected in war. Exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. you know what? A hater would just accuse you of trying to justify him like the Punisher. That's what they would say. <laughs> right. Right. Well, right. Well, I love how the rules have changed because uh, the evolution of Batman is is quite fascinating. Because you know everyone was complaining about Ben Affleck how. He wasn't directly killing them, like like for instance, the guy that had the flamethrower, like he shot the flamethrower oh, yeah. and that blew and up. So the guy like, killed himself because yeah. he pulled the trigger. Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't like he right. directly shot him. He was just like that's kind of like Zach's way of explaining it. And now you ha you have the newest trailer for Robert Pattinson's Batman. He just beats the guy's head in, just you know, ten punches. Just by right, he should be dead. And, or and yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just like, oh, okay. I guess now we're, we're going down that route that Batman does kill now, which is I'm fine with me. But that's the like, thing that I, I've learned as a, as a as a person grow like with me per, like growing is how we need to accept change, you know, especially in movies. Like it's a movie, you know, it, it's it shouldn't really it shouldn't bum you out that you know in your world Batman doesn't kill or he does, you know what I mean, or mm -hmm. vice versa. Like I think people should be more accepting of stuff like that because I think it's really dumb to be that nitpicky. Yeah, over what yeah. a character should and shouldn't do because I now I love different interpretations. Of the character and, and i go right to joaquin phoenix as the joker like yeah. a lot of people complain like that wasn't a joker origin story yeah because it was made up it was something completely different exactly but i enjoy yeah. the hell out of it i thought that oh, movie man. was fantastic it. yeah I I love the it, great man. thing is that you have to take risks as an artist and that what todd phillips did was indeed a big risk oh yeah, yeah paid off but like if you're just expected to write it how people see them then you're not an artist you're just what the hell is it? They're just a copycat. Yeah. Yeah. In the end of the day, it's like you know, uh, one the, the the that it has changed. That that that's a notion that changed throughout time and like the time we live in now. It just seems like like before there was like the artist would give you what he wanted, and you have to just take it as the you know the person who's appreciating it. Now we're living yeah. in a day where it's like I want the artist to give me what I want, yeah. like instead of just taking the artist's vision for what it is. You know, yeah. uh, so, and that's what we're seeing right now, you know, and so hats off to the artists, you know, whether you're director and music or anything of that nature, hats off to those that stick to the pure nature of what it is they want to give, you know, and taking that yeah. risk because, you know, nowadays, yeah, the, the climate is do whatever the corporation or the organization wants you to do, you know, so that we can make this money and all be successful. You know, that's that's the notion now. And it's like, 
like I said, hats off to those that are like, no, I want to give what I want to give my art, what's coming from my heart, my, my, my soul, my mind, you know, and either you like it or you don't. And, yep. you know, I, I love but, Joker, man. Joker was a, a great film. Um, yeah. I, I probably watched that as many times as I watched BBS in theater, you know, and that was a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, a, I think a lot of that, you know, I want mentality stems from the fact that these are, you know, characters that have come from a source material. Like people, when they watch a movie based on a book, have similar reactions, obviously not as extreme as uh, yeah. comic book readers. Um, but, you know, like look at Harry Potter as a, a perfect example. Oh, yeah. There was a, a lot removed, you know, people complained. So they felt like, you know, but I think, I think people also need to realize that, uh, you know, these are not the comics. It's by default an Elseworld. It's not canon. So, exactly. you know, you have to understand this is one story that's being told. You know, you, you can't expect it to be exactly like the comics. You know, they have uh, animated movies that, that even the animated movies aren't even accurate. In fact, I just saw Red Sun and I was pissed that they – Cut out yeah. the ending. Yeah. Oh God! Why? <laughs> but, you know, Nick, basically. The point if you're not gonna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I felt like the ending of Red Sun was like what made the story so great. But <laughs> yeah. the the point <laughs> is that these are that these films are else world stories, and and so they people need to approach them that way rather than be like, oh, I'm gonna look for it to be exactly comic accurate. Yeah. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And that's that, like, you know, it's, it's a shame because, you know, a lot of these movies, they pay homage to the comics. They pay homage to the source material. They're just not directly going by that same storyline, you know, yeah. but very much you do see uh, bits and pieces of what you saw in the comics. You know, Zach, Zach did that beautifully. Oh, God. In, uh, yeah. in his BVS. Uh, the Dark Knight Returns movie. moment. Yeah. He, and then even Dark yep. Knight in the Dark Knight movie, uh, Dark Knight Rises, um, you know, even that, all of that, you know. Oh yeah, he broke the bat. From, yeah, that that's from the comics, or and even right. or even from the animated series. You know, that one episode where Bane breaks into the uh, uh, Batcave and finds out who Batman is. Yeah, Night all that, in yeah, the all Dark Knight. Basically, yeah. uh, the the computer system he had was Omac Project, which. Yeah. I I saw that. I was like, oh, this is awesome. Exactly. And I, I, you know, you're able to connect this. So like as a, a comic fan, I'm like, cool, you know, but I'm okay with it still being its own story by right. You know, like you said, yeah. elsewhere, yeah, so to course. speak, you know? Um, yeah, I, I, man, you know, it is what it is, I guess. <laughs> you know, you guys, you guys yeah. raise a good point, you know, and I think if we get anything out of this movement and what we did for Zach's movie and everything is it's, it, it, artistic integrity. It, it's the one thing that we've been fighting for. And yes. I, it, it's very simply put, you hire someone to do the job, you lay out the script and how you want it to go, and you say, okay, make that movie and let yes. him do his thing. Let them do their thing. Make and that's that it. Movie. And that's it. If yeah. you don't like it, when the movie comes out and you don't like it, then for the next project, don't involve that person. Don't involve that director. Get someone else. But artistic integrity, like you said, you know what I mean? Like, the, just let them do what they want to do. Let them make their art. And let us yeah. accept it or not accept it. And that's up to us. But exactly. at the end of the they day, like, take, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, at the end of the day, you had the studio that was getting involved and they were just in his ear. And, and then obviously, you know, with the death of his daughter, and that was their easy way to get him out. And then they bring, <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's funny because if I was Joss Whedon and I come in and they show me the footage that Zach shot, like they show me what he has so far, I would have been like, no, I ain't changing this. I'm out of here. <laughs> like compared to, <laughs> yeah. compared to what we just got with that trailer, I would be like, wait a second. You want me to cut Dark Side out? You want me yeah. to cut the side? You want me to cut Iris Wet? You want me to cut all this juicy stuff? Yeah, yeah. We want you to call it. Oh, oh okay. man. <laughs> you Here's know, the it, thing. <laughs> and I let me just say this. Yeah. I have my own personal feelings about that man. I don't like him very much, but I'm not gonna try to speak ill of him. I will say that I think. He had like a very good run for a while with, you know, Firefly, even though that didn't make a lot of money. It was a very good series. He did Buffy and then he finally got to do Avengers, which I'm sure made everyone think very highly of him. So he comes in here and he, he he's given the job to make it lighter. And so of course he'd want to make it his own thing. Yeah, that's you know, true. apparently he 
had to go through executive meddling of his own. And I'm not saying that actually made that would have made the movie better if he'd been allowed to do his own thing, because apparently he wanted to make it a lot funnier than it already was. Oh, but still, <laughs> he um, he was brought in with this idea that he'd you know be part of the series. You know, he'd get to direct Batgirl after this, but that's not happening now, of course. You know, and, you know he'd be yeah. I don't know anyway, if you guys. Uh, no, yeah, <laughs> no. I, but I agree with what you're saying. I, I think uh, there was clearly like some sort of incentive, you know, to bring him on and to why he would be able to change things and whatever. Um, but I think now with even like the certain things that are coming out with uh, what Ray Fisher is bringing out with Jeff Johns and them, oh, I think yeah. it's starting to be clear now what happened behind the scenes. And then when you start to find out Jeff Johns' resume. You know, and who his uh, acquaintances are, more than acquaintances, I should say, but who is who he's connected with. And you start realizing, like, is this really what happened behind the scenes? Is this what was going on? And then yeah. it leads back to the whole sabotage thing, because, wow, I mean, you know, Jeff Johns has a relationship with Kevin Foggy. They're, they're buddy buddies. It turns out yeah. he came from Marvel first before he was DC. You know, um, then all of a sudden you see this transition of trying to bring weed in, who's coming from Marvel, you know, and. And now, like, again, it's like now that all these things are coming out, it's almost starting to be clear now that it was a sabotage, you know, allegedly, sure. I guess, allegedly. But it started, allegedly. it's really looking that way. But it's really yeah, looking that way, you know. There have been warning signs. I'd care to listen to you. But Lex, if you want to comment. I'd... No, no okay. I, I mean, even with the Civil War and BBS, I mean, yes. they, they basically flaunted the fact that, yeah, they they uh, change gears specifically for that purpose, and then when you compare those two films, it's like, I mean, there are a lot of pretty pretty on the nose. <laughs> I have when, to say, no, I when mean, you, you when you first. see when you see the Snyder Cut compared to what they did over at Marvel, probably with Infinity War and Endgame, it's gonna it's gonna look very similar. You you think about you know the the Thanos and and Dark Side and the, the like their worlds coming. It's it's uh, it's gonna be, yeah. It, yeah, no, it's it's it, it, it's clear. It's, look, it, you're either you're you're in denial if you're telling yourself that what you saw in Infinity War or even like even like uh, Lex said, starting from Civil War, really, if you're yeah. gonna try and convince yourself that what we saw started seeing within the MCU wasn't what Zach had planned for the DCU, uh, you, you're 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 kidding yourself, you know. Yep, um, you are. And I, I don't know. To me. I always, I always thought this one was like the jab that really, to me, I, I don't know, I, maybe I was looking too deep into it, but I really, every time I see this, the, uh, when I, every time I saw this, I'm like, why does this just seem like it's a jab at Warner Brothers or at DC for being stupid enough for changing the film? Because we yeah. all know we were supposed to get, you know, the Snyder Cut or his vision bef way before Infinity War, right? Yeah. But that, that one scene where like, you know, when, um, uh, when Thor finally like, you know, throws Stormbreaker to, you know, I guess, uh, get Thanos. And he says, you should have gone for the head. You know, right. two things are happening there. One, it's a God killing a God. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, well, it's Titan anyway. Well, yeah, you know, but essentially he, you know, even throughout the movie, there's this uh, uh, presumption that he's trying to be a God. That's why he's yeah. like, yeah. you, you will never be a God, you know, whatever, you know? Yeah. So th that's being drilled from the beginning, you know, that, you know, uh, Thanos is trying to be the uh, pretty much the one and only, right? Um, yeah. But um, whatever, it's a god tr uh, supposed to be killing a god, you know. And like I said, the the fact that he says you should have gone for the head, I felt was a jab towards DC for saying we don't want Wonder Woman to cut off Steppenwolf's head. So yeah. let's change right. that up, you know. Especially and it was like, when they did it in the very next movie, Thor exactly. swapped off. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, it was like they were throwing jabs at DC and Warner Brothers the whole time. Like, yeah, you guys are idiots, you know. And the whole yeah. the whole time travel in Endgame, right? Yeah, that that like you know, that half too. of the people go extinct in in the Marvel verse, and then they have to go back in time and change everything. And what's going to happen in Zach's movie? Flash, flash. There's going to be an explosion that pretty much destroys the Earth, and then the Flash has to go back and change That's everything. Prevent it from happening. It's like you know. Yeah, I'm telling you, Jeff Johns was talking to Kevin Foggy. He was telling him. I'd rather not. I'd rather not <laughs> get into that because I'm sure more of this will come to light thanks to Ray Fisher, yeah, right? Yeah. But what I have noticed, and I, it's kind of frustrating, is that you know I think 
a lot of people don't notice how Snyder does such a good job of building the world, like how the world was affected after Man of Steel, how it was affected after Batman v Superman, and then how David Ayer paid proper tribute, even in Man. Patty Jenkins. And so when I watched Endgame, I liked it. Don't get me wrong, it's still a good film in spite of all the insults that, right. well, allegedly. But I always <laughs> was annoyed that we never saw the world outside. I mean, maybe one or two moments is with the gravestones and an empty shot of City Field, but we don't see how it's affected, you know, government, how it's affected the market. We just mm -hmm. get a brief comment about how the whales have moved into uh, the harbor right, because right. the water's gone cleaner. Yeah, and you got to accept it. It is what it is. Like, we're not going to give you a full, thorough yeah. explanation as to why. You just got to accept things as they are. And it's Spider-Man Far From Home. It's like nothing ever happened. Nope. <laughs> right, they explain it in like two seconds at the beginning. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yes. and that to me was always the difference between what uh, the MCU was doing and what it, it, what it appeared that, you know, DC was trying to do with, with Snyder and what he was trying to do. And it was like, look, we're going to make these movies, there's going to be things that connect them, but overall, we want you guys to be able to do your own thing. So it was like David Ayer could do his thing, Patty yep. Jenkins does her own thing, while we add these little things that let you know they are in the same universe, but we're going to give you your own world, you know, still at the right. same time. Very, which was very smart. Perfectly fine for me, you know, I'm like, it, it, it made sense, you know. It's just yeah. like I said, it's a, it's a shame that the studio... Uh, you know, yeah. allowed themselves to be played, you know, and started meddling with if things that they, they shouldn't have meddled with. If only they hit on the multiverse idea earlier, you know, like, you know, Jeff Johns could have been free to start his own thing instead of try to take what was already somebody else. You know, the, the thing is, I feel like they were. I, I feel like that was what they were trying to do. I think, again, just Jeff Johns being there, they, they trusted the wrong people. And that's what sabotaged it all. Because I, I want to say that's what they were going for. I want to say when uh, BVS was coming out and... Uh, uh, people were already complaining, apparently, that Ben Affleck was Batman instead of Christian Bale because he was the one that, you know, everybody was in love with. And uh, and I think somebody came out. I can't remember who it was, but they were like, don't worry. Like, this is Batman. You know, you know, that's that Batman. This is this Batman. And it, if they were already trying to insinuate that, like, hey, it's all it's all the multiverse. They weren't in depth in it, but I think they had that idea. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure. And I'm uh, sure. I think you give them too much credit. <laughs> Well, you know what? We're, we got like 12 minutes until we're at the hour mark. So uh, I guess the last question I wanted to ask you guys, um, what was your favorite part of the trailer? And we can start with you, Lex. Oh, wow. Uh, that is a great <laughs> question. Like, uh, I mean, can I say all of it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, mean, yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I, I yeah, love it. That's fine. I, I love seeing the black suit. I love seeing the sod. I love seeing Uxus. Yeah. I, I, yeah. mean, I mean, probably my, my – what made me smile the most was that shot of the uh, the, the, the uh, Nightmare Future with the Justice, Justice League. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No way that, that we'll see more of that, yeah. And you saw the oh, Trident so, and, and Wonder Woman's shield and all broken. Right, and, and the Joker card. Mean that they all yeah. died. Right. Which, which well, is interesting. Joker card, but. Well, the Joker card, if, if you notice, I don't know if you guys saw this, but on Batman's gun in the Nightmare se uh, sequence, he has the Joker card on the gun. Right. And that's right. just like, the unless I, dead, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know, because uh, I'm, I'm starting to think there's a scene in the Nightmare sequence where Batman is with Deathstroke and Joker. That you know, would be interesting, but look, I don't know if he uh, came up with the Joker. I, 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 I think. Mean, go ahead, go ahead, Lex. Go ahead, Lex. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's a spoiler or not. Uh, but there was some talk that it was uh, Joker and Lex. Yeah. And from what I understand, uh, was, I had yeah. read. I had read that the other night. Zach went on uh, a podcast and. And said that there was bigger plans for Lex, yeah, uh, a longer narrative. So, right, yeah, no, definitely. I, I, I personally think, um, I mean, not to get sidetracked here, but I, I really feel like in the long run, I think what they were going to do um, was, or I'm probably still going to do, is I think we're gonna get the Legion of Doom, and I think the Legion of Doom is going to fight alongside Justice League. To go out against Dark Side, I really feel that's the direction they're going with that. Well, um, if they get Black Adam in that, I am so there. Because we saw, <laughs> I don't we, see that right, happening. 
We, <laughs> right, I don't know about that. Well, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I, I didn't see that happening either, but after seeing like what they were saying on the Black Adam panel and on the Shazam panel, I'm almost curious. I'm almost curious. I'm, I almost feel like it might be that they're waiting to see what happens with this film. And I think what is going to happen from then on is they're going to figure out like, all right, is that the direction we want to go with this? And in, possibly might be so. I don't know. You know, the way they were talking, there were certain things that they was that was said on the Black Adam panel and on the Shazam panel that made you think like, are they really going to go that route? You know, they could just be messing with our heads because they know what we want to hear, but you know? Here's the thing. The Snyderverse is on HBO Max. And then these other movies are WB uh, Pictures. So right. I doubt... You know, Dwayne Johnson's gonna want to go on HBO Max and do something on there. He's gonna want that mainstream uh, theatrical uh, release. Uh, oh yeah. And as oh, yeah. far as obviously we know, I, I mean, Zach's original plan did not incorporate uh, Black Adam or Shazam. No, yeah, definitely not. So if he decides, all right, let me modify slightly what I'm doing, then you know maybe. They could do something, but I don't see that yeah, you know, with, with them. But I, yeah, but yeah we're definitely not going to get them in the Zoom, Zoom cut. As far as the Legion, yeah, I, oh, yeah, I've I'm never convinced suggested that's that, all but just. You, you think I, that's I all think, dust? Yeah, I don't think he, that Zach had any plans with the Legion of Doom. I think, you know, maybe a couple of villains, like I said, uh, Lex and Joker, but yeah. I don't think so it was. You, you, don't, you don't think that last scene at the end of. The only reason I say this is because. Like we got the scene that we got it obviously in uh, Justice League, <laughs> you know where it's it's uh, that, that, that yeah. stroke and Lex certainly and have a league of our own. Yeah, yeah I honestly right? don't think so that's that part that. of it. So that was that. But the only reason I say that is because you see that scene, and then it's clear that uh, that Zack Snyder actually shot his like that scene. Not, not maybe not that exact scene that we saw, but yeah. if you notice, he put up photos of that same uh, sequence. So yeah. that was his sequence, you know what I mean? He did have something planned there. And then you look at what we saw in Justice League, and again, the question is, well, was that dialogue what Zach had intended or was that Josh? I honestly wouldn't know. But from just seeing that that was a sequence that already was Zach's alone because of what he posted on the yeah. zero, I feel like, well, let's just say, I'm, I'm speculating that that was his scene, you know, that was his scene. And yeah. um, then with all the talk, um, you know, where like you said, where they, you know, they saying uh, legs, Joker, and all these things, and yeah. then there was this other interview that he had, where or not him, I think it was Ray Fisher, where he was explaining that uh, him and Zach were when they would talk about ideas that they had for the movie and the film. He said that a lot of the things that they were, they were talking about was uh, a lot of reference with uh, the Justice League animated series. And things of that nature, which is where I'm getting this idea from, is because like yeah. in that cartoon series, that actually happens. That actually goes yeah. down where right. But I believe that scene with with Lex and Deathstroke would have come earlier in the film. Yeah, I know. Oh, and it probably and it probably will. I mean, who knows? You know, right. it so it's will. a different yeah. context. Uh, you know, so, so what about yeah. you, uh, Vega? What what was your favorite scene? Like, oh you right, tell right. Us <laughs> right, right. Uh, that's right we sort of lost track <laughs> yeah that's all good it's, it's all good right. no um i think uh man it, it probably was that same uh nightmare scene but i think apart from that i mean the whole trailer is awesome yeah but i think the thing that made me smile the most like that was like wow is how we ended it you know with uh you know the whole i guess the league at that at that time and then you know uh batman like you know uh yeah mm. you know he's never faced us not us united you yeah. know that to me was all like wow like yeah. just, he he just wrapped it up so well you know like he yeah. totally did uh, yeah i honestly that was the <laughs> one that really really made me smile <laughs> yeah so what i guess doing? i'll say that uh so i have a lot the one i was gonna mention i'm not because for anyone who wants to avoid spoilers we both know there was a very big one well not for us because he already told us but yeah, yeah, yeah. concerned <laughs> cyborg uh yeah, yeah. the other thing <laughs> is definitely the cornfield like mm. you've already mentioned how like the triumphant shot showing them standing that will be earned it will be totally earned on like some stupid fist bump that was a, a running <laughs> gag yeah but no the shot where clark is with Lois and Martha, and this time I think it is Martha, 
is going yeah. to be proper. It's not going to him be him joking about how itchy he is after coming back from the dead. He's going to, I think, propose to Lois and, well, no, rather, to accept it because yeah. he's still wearing that ring. And, you know, there will be a brief talk about how he has to go because, you know, that's their life. And I think it's, you know, yeah. for better or worse, till death do us apart. And mm. I think it'll be a very powerful scene. Most definitely. So, Listen, if you get two, I want to name another another show. <laughs> did I? I guess I did. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. What is it? I mean, uh, I I want to say the Flash. Um, Traveling, yeah. Basically, just like That's, you know. That was my favorite. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. That that just looked so crazy. I, I can't wait to see what what that like looks like in its glory and in its yeah. full glory. Yeah. The, the speed force and all that stuff. It, that's gonna be great. Uh, but I am looking I'll, forward to seeing Superman and Steppenwolf go at it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hope there was I hope that, more that of a shot, fight. right? Yeah, yeah. They yeah but it looks like he was throwing. It didn't look like he was leaping at him, but like he got yeah. thrown possibly by Aquaman, something like that. Something, I do hope that but, whatever happens, that Steppenwolf will give Superman a proper fight rather than just get battered yeah. around. Right. You know, yeah. I think he will, man. I, I, we're looking at a different Steppenwolf here. It's, it's. I mean, yeah. apart from just aesthetically, I mean. I don't know what the hell the studio was thinking when they changed that up. Because, like, honestly, I'm like, when you look at what Zack did with this guy, and it's it's clear, like, this is alien. This is a new god. Yeah. This is what a new god would look like. What you gave us yeah. was, he looked like an alien that was dressed up in a figure of an old god, like armor. With, <laughs> wasn't, that, know, like, wasn't that Jeff John's design? I Man. think so. Yeah, like, the new 52 depicts the new gods as more human in nature. Right. And Seven Wolf is basically just a big human with a helmet, really, and an axe. Uh, okay. Right. But that here he looks like, you know, a proper H.R. Geiger style alien. Yeah. Right. And he'll right. probably have a better voice because I'm sure the audio was redone. Yes, yeah. that's something I thought about. Yeah. Yeah. Can't wait to hear what he sounds like. Well, we are uh, just about at the hour mark, guys. That flew by. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you so much for coming on. I had a, I had a great time. I mean, DC Fandom, Snyder, first official Snyder Cut trailer. Uh, it was oh, yeah. absolutely amazing, and it was nice to meet you guys. Uh, and I, I look Same forward here. to doing it again sometime. So, okay. thank you again for coming on. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Thank you.